Good afternoon, everybody. I wanted to cover, this is part one of a segment that's going to probably have several different parts to it because eventually at the end um, I want to do a, a demonstration on how to make your own, uh, grow your own phytoplankton. So, first thing I'm going to start out with is this, I wanted to um, say here that subject of dosing phytoplankton in a marine aquarium, you know, has been a popular debate on online forums. I'm sure everybody's seen it. Should I dose phytoplankton? Should I not? Um, I, however, am in favor of dosing my, my system. Several years ago, one of, one of the local fish stores I go to had, uh, you know, had this giant container of phytoplankton. It must have been five gallons or four gallons of phytoplankton. And he had a giant, giant reef tank in the store as a display tank. And he dumped it in there and then explained to me, how what all this everything in our system uses the phytoplankton for just like in the ocean including corals and in your live rock the bacteria on the live rock the copepods that inhabit uh, the different parts of your reef including your sand and it's basically a whole root food for your whole reef is the way I look at it um, let me start off by giving a brief explanation of what phytoplankton te te technically is they're small the photosynthetic organisms similar to single-celled plants that make up the bottom of the food chain. Drifting along in the ocean, phytoplankton turn light energy from the sun and carbon dioxide into light-sustaining sugar called glucose. So, in fact, the name phytoplankton is based on a Greek word for plant drifters. To further characterize their floating plant-like life, like hard plants, phytoplankton convert light into sugar by a process called photosynthesis. Phytoplankton are considered to be primary producers in the food web. So they're basically the lowest form of life on the food chain in the ocean, but they are used up by many things in the ocean. They're very important to sustain life in the ocean. As primary producers, many marine filter feeding invertebrate link one link up to the food chain depend on phytoplankton as a primary or secondary food source. Many phytoplankton species are a nutritious source of the omega-3 highly unsaturated fatty acids, EPA and DHA, which are even thought to be beneficial in human diets. These essential fatty acids are one of the beneficial components of fish oil that is commonly consumed as a nutritional supplement. On a natural cor coral reef, phytoplankton are an abundant food source for many clams, and other bivalves, soft coral, sponges, and zooplankton like copepods. In the home marine system, however, phytoplankton are generally not present. Those Aquarius in favor, like myself, therefore attempt to provide this natural food source to the invertebrates in their tank. So one of the things, you know, there's several types of ways to dose phytoplankton in the tank. I pour mine in on a daily basis. Um, you can do the direct, you know, some people just, I just pour it in and it broadcasts feed over the whole tank. Uh, some people do that. Some people will, you know, put like a pipette full of phytoplankton and just target feed different animals in the tank. So I like to do, um, I like the indirect dosing basically. You know, I just put it in the water column. Um, one thing is, if you have use a UV uh, sterilizer, that will kill the phytoplankton. So you would want to turn that off if you are using uh, phytoplankton. Um, I do, however, leave the skimmer on. Some people say turn that off as well. Um, since I started dosing phytoplankton a few years ago, I have noticed a huge benefit to all of my corals. All of my corals are actually grow. They extend their polyps. I haven't had one coral loss since I started dosing phytoplankton, not one. And that was a couple of years ago. So that was probably one of the best things that's ever happened. Um, and like I said, clams love it. Now this clam, you know, right here, my Duresa clam, he's an aura clam or a Duresa. He's large enough now, he gets, he gets most of his food from filter feeding particles out of the water column, also from the light. Um, but the phytoplankton doesn't turn it either. Now, if you had a clam that was only an inch, inch and a half big, two inches, you would have to, you know, feed them directly with phytoplankton because that's how they survive. Now, over here, and he kind of shrunk up. 
But over here you can see the top of my little fan worm. They eat phytoplankton. And there, and he's in his shell, but this is a, and he's a uh, Hawaiian feather duster worm. This is a cocoa worm, and he also, that's his primary food source, is phytoplankton. Um, phytoplankton became, is, is not cheap, as anybody could tell you, is not cheap to buy. So, um, after doing several reading, watching YouTube videos, and everything else, I have decided to make my own phytoplankton. I will be posting a video on that. It's not hard at all. It's it's real simple to make. Uh, it's definitely something you don't need to overthink, for sure. But with a few uh, items, you can definitely do that, and I'll do that on a later video. Um, so, I just feel that phytoplankton is the building block of everything in the system. So, I not my corals have been doing great since I started dosing the phytoplankton so I'm real happy I, I went that way and, and again there's there's pros and cons so it's definitely do your research um, so and some people do stuff like where they hook up you know uh, fancy equipment that drops phytoplankton in so much a day and all that you, you know that's up to the individual I don't do that I just like I said I just uh, broadcast feed it so that's basically the just of phytoplankton. Again, it's the lowest form on the food chain. Why it's phyto, it's a plant. Um, and so here are my two, I have one and a half bottles left. So I'll, as soon as I go to harvest my phytoplankton, that's growing right now in the basement, I will then uh, do a video on um, how to make your own, how to grow your own phytoplankton. There's just a, a few things you guys need, and then I'll set those out and um, get you to understand and save you a ton of money I, I mean absolutely a ton of money phytoplankton isn't cheap you're spending 10 12 dollars for a 12 ounce bottle so um and if you have a big tank you know um that's that's kind of hard so i'm going to go ahead and do um dose some phytoplankton right now So what you and what you want to do to phytoplankton is stored in the refrigerator. Okay, every day it'll start to separate. Every day you need to shake, give your phytoplankton a good shake. You know, just make sure, shake it up a little bit. Um, every single day, even the bottles that you're not going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and add some phytoplankton to the tank right now. Okay. So here we are. Be patient with me. I'm doing it with one hand. See the phytoplankton going in there? Nice and thick. Nice and thick. And I, I let it broadcast over everything. And I, I notice no ill effects from feeding phytoplankton, no excess algae blooms. Some people might report that. That, that's in my opinion that's probably from something else another you know uh, not from phytoplankton um, but again I hope you enjoyed this video and I will um, go ahead when I do part number two and start on showing you guys how to make your or grow your own phytoplankton okay if you like this please like the video and subscribe to my channel on YouTube appreciate it have a great day